Yeah. Where's the keeper at? In your pocket. You mean this pocket? <laughs> well, you need to be attentive to that. So before we do anything, we need to inspect the box. First thing out of your mouth was, well, where's the keeper? Well, it's in my pocket. That's right. Next question. Are those keepers installed properly? Does it matter? I think it does. So is this acceptable? No. Why? Because if that falls out, it, but it's going to historically fall out. Common sense tells me those need to be down. This is not acceptable in my eyes. It might not be in the data, but it's... That's not good. So, we found out all pins are in place. The keepers are now in place. If that keeper was gone, what could we replace it with? Nothing. Tie wire? With another keeper. Welding rod? No. Somebody had their pen they wanted to put in there? I will tell you this, I've called the manufacturer. If we had a bolt, a bolt would be acceptable until you got the appropriate part. How about you as the competent person? You need to get that appropriate keeper in, in there to keep yourself out of a jackpot. Okay, next. Someone said something about the tagline. Why do we want a tagline? You told me the other day, correct? I can't do what? I can't touch my load. It's safer to use the tagline. We are op we're over in an open excavation. We have the potential to fall into the trench just because we're trying to guide it. Okay, we understand how the four ways are going to be installed. The box, is there any difference in height on the spreaders at either end? Okay, if they, was, if they were staggered, this one was lower on this end and the other end was higher, does that matter which way we put it in the ditch? Yeah, yeah. Why? So you can maneuver it and pull it. So I can maneuver it and pull it. So this lower spreader would be, if Joe's digging this way, we're laying pipe from here to there, the lower spreader that I just described would be closest to the machine or furthest away? Closest. Sometimes they put a lunch, lunch plate on there too. Okay. What if I turn it around the other way? Is that acceptable? Does it change the integrity? Does it change the tabulated data? Uh -uh. No, I don't believe it does. It does not. Some will turn it the other way so because they want to dig underneath close to them. So it's a preference. It's not a rule, it's a rule of thumb for whatever you want to do. Obviously the size pipe has to be able to go underneath the spreader. What if I just take this spreader out and I only have one? Bad. Can't do that. You can't do that. So keep that in mind. So they're both at the same height. When we hook this on and put it in the trench, we can spin it 180, 360, whatever. Where would I secure the tagline to? It, am I going to wrap around this? This? Uh, through here? There yeah, looks like a good spot. Yeah. Does it matter? But it's planning. Sure, Once sure. I set this in there, I got to get rid of the. Exactly. I want to take it off. If you tie it to this, somebody's got to go down in there with the load still attached to That makes sense. So. You got better Are there any guidelines for the tagline? Mine is very greasy. Well is that okay? Well lubed. It's the been only, well lubricated. The only concern would be if we were around any power lines, and that would be the perfect type of yeah. rope for power. What might we? What other item might we use for tagline? Wire rope. We okay. Wire rope. Good concern. Nothing overhead. Is this going to conduct electricity? Who's the tall guy, Joe? Is that what we're going through? So up to that guy. Okay. we've got the tagline on already. Any any uh, problems with this? Am I going to do this? How about this? Can I do this because? Man, I got a lot more weight this way. Does that work? No, you shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do that. And if it swings, it's half, then it's going to rip you in half. <laughs> right, so so I, want, I want to be able to use the line appropriately, but I need to be able to let go of it. All right. Any questions so far? Joe, I think we're there, yes? Yes. Now, we're going to set the box with the, with the excavator. He has to take the bucket off. You see where he's at? He's, he's limited. He's got the spoil pile to the left. I was planning to come around through here because it's open, 
Joe has put his spoil to the left, which sometimes you may want to go to the right in this machine because that's your blind side. Then you can feed everything off the left side where the operator has more vision. Just a consideration on planning. That's in the perfect world. Maybe there was something here that was an obstruction. All right, so we are planning our moves, which is important. Now, I want to ask you, where are you going to put your bucket? Do you want to disconnect the bucket, come back over and hook the rigging on? Okay. Okay, now we've got rid of the bucket. It's out of the working area. It's able to do our work. We're going to attach the appropriate rigging in the manner we discussed inside. All right, with this setup, we have a threaded bolt with a nut and a keeper. How would you install it here? Would you go in this way or are you going to thread it through the other way? Or does it matter? Put the pin out. Put the threads on this side. Threads, on threads side. in or out? Out. In. Out. Not out. Out? Why? So I can see it. I can, you didn't give me my tapper. Tap it lightly. Hey. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. For demonstration purposes, we're not going to bend it. But what should we do in the real world? You should bend it so it doesn't That's got to be bent over. Right. Pins inserted this way so you can see it. What we didn't check was that the ratings of the devices we put on there. We're assuming that. Okay? Seven and a half? Okay. We'll get that back. That's what we're going to use. These were not. You want to hook that on there? Some of you were paying attention enough that you said that rigging is improper. We talked about the placement of the hook. We do not want to pull on the thin side or pull against the safety. I just randomly hooked them up the way I wanted to. Some of you saw that. The next thing to look for is the legs themselves. You have four legs. The two inner legs, you want to pair them together. It doesn't matter whether you put them on this end or that end the two outer ones to the other. Now, just so you can see, the fat part of the hook is going to be downward. We're going to accept the side or the pin like that, verify that it's locked, okay? All the hooks should be put on in that same manner. But if we look at our, look how the legs are all split up. I've got the outer one here. I want the other outer one up on that end. That would be acceptable. Or, if I have this outer one there, I could put the outer one there. It really doesn't matter. But I'm going outer and inner. So we're going to open this one up. Attach it in the same manner. You see what's going on here? Both outside ones were right here. Now, Willie, you're absolutely correct. This one's coming off. Here's my left side as I'm facing you. That's got to come out. Don't remember, don't forget, fat part of that hook is going to be down. 
unlock it, open it up, verify that that safety is in place. This look a little better now, or will? Everything's nice and neat. Inner and outer. No questions asked. We're going to go ahead and lift this up. Yo, one point to bring up. If you're going to bring somebody up on a load, make sure it's plumb. You're their set of eyes. That's why you're there. He can't always, maybe his depth perception isn't perfect. So you're in a position here that a hook should be plumb when we lift up on the box. That's important. Any comments, questions at this point? We disconnect the rigging, put the bucket back on, and that box is in there pretty tight, is it not? Yeah,